Okay, we're asked to evaluate these composite trig functions, and the first thing you'll notice, well, is that they're messy, but the second thing you'll notice is that these things right here don't look like special angles. Okay, and what that means is we're not going to be using our unit circle for this. Or in other words, we're not going to be using memorized values. We're going to have to figure out what the inverse cosine of negative 8 ninths is, and then take the sine of that. Now, I still don't intend for you to do a calculator on this. A calculator could probably help you through it, but the point here is to pull out your old standard coordinate plane to help you through it and get familiar with the quadrants that are allowed for inverse trigonometry. So if I say, actually, you know what? Hold on. Hold this thought. I'm going to use this graph, but hold on to that for a second. I want to rewrite this. I'm going to say, this is just the sine of theta equals question mark, okay? Where theta equals the inverse cosine of negative 8 ninths, okay? Now, if theta is the inverse cosine of negative 8 ninths, that means the cosine of theta is negative 8 ninths. So, scratch out that middle part, if that's distracting you, and just look at it this way. If the cosine, if there's an angle such that the cosine is negative 8 ninths, what's the sine? Well, we've done this before. We did this back in the standard coordinate plane stuff. If the cosine of an angle is negative 8 ninths, you're going to draw, whoops, you're going to use the proper ink. Here we go. You're going to draw a quadrant 2 triangle, or maybe you would draw a quadrant 3 triangle. Because you're thinking... A cosine value that's negative is going to be somewhere over on the left, right? Those are negative x values. Well, now we're stuck. Which one do we use? Is it this one or is it this one? Here's where we use a clue from inverse trigonometry. Which quadrant does inverse cosine come from? Remember this thing? And I've said inverse quadrants only come from quadrants 1 and 2. And that's just by tradition to keep these problems brief. So if they only come from quadrants 1 and 2, that means it's not quadrant 3. Okay, so we can just sort of get rid of that one. So we're dealing with a quadrant 2 triangle. Well, that's great. And negative 8 ninths, well, that means adjacent over hypotenuse. And we just need to finish the triangle. We need to complete this using Pythagorean's theorem. So that means, I'm going to call that y. That means y squared plus negative 8 squared equals 9 squared, right? So that means y squared plus 64 equals 81. So that means y squared equals uh, 17, I think. Okay, so that means y is the square root of 17, plus or minus. Which one makes sense? Hopefully you're saying plus because y is going up. Okay, so y equals square root of 17. And that means, run, run out of room there, the sine of this angle is the square root of 17, the y value, over the hypotenuse, 9. Okay, there we go. There's our answer. Now, the next part of it says, what's the tangent? Okay, what's the tangent right there? So for that one, all you do is you take the triangle you've already drawn, okay, and then you take the tangent of it. So tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, or in other words, the square root of 17 over negative 8. And if you don't like having negative 8 on the bottom, that's fine. You could move the negative sign around. Um, but that's how you do this problem. You draw a triangle first, and the trick is drawing it in the right quadrants based on what you know about inverse trigonometry. Now, you'll notice we never actually figured out theta. We don't need to. For this, all we needed to know was... Um, the sign of whatever that angle theta is. We don't need to know exactly what that angle is. You'd need a calculator for that. Uh, but we don't need a calculator to evaluate the entire function. It's kind of funny how that works out, but there you go.